Welcome to the Digital Amateur Television Experimenters Night. This is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania. Amateur radio is a worldwide hobby that has many different aspects. Digital television is just one of the many modes and areas that are covered. Maybe you're interested in becoming involved in the DATV Experimenters Nights. Do you realise that you do not have to be a radio amateur or need any ATV equipment to participate anywhere in the world? Also participate in the night by coming up to the Queen's Domain Club Rooms. Yes, right on top of the Queen's Domain in the Heritage Listed Coast Wireless Station. You never know, we might get you in front of the camera or behind doing one of the many roles during the night. We get underway with our program on a Wednesday night from 7.30pm local time. We'll see you soon. This is VK7 OTC. Okay, this is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV Experimenters Night. And good evening from VK7 Tango Whiskey, Justin. And uh, we've got, uh, if you're coming in via uh, this, the uh, stream, watching us via the YouTube stream, please, please, please let us know you're there and uh, where you're coming in from. It would be uh, fantastic. And if you've got any questions during the night, please shoot them in through the chat. All right, we'll do uh, acknowledgement of country. Um, in recognition of the deep history and culture of this island, we'd like to acknowledge and pay our respects to all Tasmanian Aboriginal people, the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet and gather and present tonight. So we've got, uh, um, we've got a, 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 I suppose you'd call this the magazine uh, uh, edition of the DATV night. Um, uh, we... We have uh, a number of things that we're going to look at tonight, uh, and I have to. Uh, I, I hate starting off with an apology, but I have to start off with an apology. Um, it was, uh, a, and you'll hear about this in a short while. Um, abject failure with getting the caribou light uh, up and going. So, uh, <laughs> but you'll hear about that in a sec. <laughs> Before we get underway um, with that, um, one of the things that we have. Um, we became aware of from Ben, VK7BEN, uh, who uh, shot through, uh, we run a Discord channel in um, uh, in the club, uh, and Ben uh, put up on the, um, the Discord channel a uh, fascinating website that I, I thought I would show you tonight. And uh, hello to David, uh, VK7AAE AAE from uh, down at Blackman's Bay. So uh, good evening, David. And uh, welcome to the stream. Um, now, there is um, the Internet Archive, which probably many of you know and um, maybe love because uh, we, we tend to go back to it when we need to look at, um, <laughs> look at a website from a long time ago. Um, there was a group uh, that got uh, some funding to put together the Digital Library of Amateur Radio and Communications now, as it currently stands, and you can see the number on the uh, on the, the left hand side of the screen, fifty eight thousand and thirty two uh, uh, items that they have already collected uh, in relation to this particular archive, and they've put them all in one place. Um, there is a lot uh, of uh, American material, but there is also European material in there, and I also shot off a uh, email today. 
uh, to uh, the, the, the contact details, the contact person for this, uh, to give them the link to the, uh, uh, the VK6UU archive of Amateur Radio magazine, uh, which certainly should be up here as well. So uh, they're calling for, um, uh, they're calling for uh, any, any details and items that uh, are not here. Hello, Warren. <laughs> Um, um, and um, the digital library of amateur radio and communications. So if you're having trouble sleeping or, or need to refer back to uh, uh, some magazine in the deep dark past, um, I wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be terribly surprised if it's not actually in this particular collection. Um, if you look at the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, about page here, um, you can see it's only just only just kicked off, uh, only just kicked off in uh, January 2023. At the end, uh, they've made it uh, public to uh, for people to have a look at. Uh, but uh, huge, huge collection of uh, digital library uh, and amateur radio uh, items uh, from all over the world. Uh, so uh, I'll put a link in the video description for uh, for this particular. Um, for this particular archive, um, absolutely fantastic resource uh, that uh, you need to bookmark, um, and they they're going to be constantly adding to it. So it's just uh, it's just going to get better and better. Um, there is a uh, there is a fascinating uh, in fact, and I have to thank Ben for this VK Seven Ben who pointed us in this direction. Um, there is a wonderful wonderful um, um, archive here. I don't know. Ah, here we go. <laughs> Numbers and Oddities Newsletter Archive. Now, if we click on this, <laughs> Ben um, Ben pointed this out along with uh, there was some some Ritty uh, Ritty magazines. Um, this particular, if if we click on one of these uh, and open it up, um, this is a fascinating Numbers and Oddities, and it opens up into a reader form. Numbers and Oddities. Um, uh, aka the spooks newsletter <laughs> so this is all about this is all about um, numbers stations and it, it's per country and where they were heard and the numbers that were were transmitted uh, and like unless you're the actual spy receiving these at the other end you, they, they mean absolutely nothing but I I find this absolutely fascinating this is a whole magazine about numbers stations um, so it's just <laughs> There is some wonderful, wonderful stuff uh, on the um, on the internet, <laughs> and that just happens to be one of them. And uh, hello, Sean from uh, up at uh, up in the Valley of Love, uh, so uh, from uh, New Norfolk. So uh, greetings, greetings, greetings. Uh, but definitely worth a look, and I'll put a link in the um, in the uh, the the uh, video description. Now on to the sad, sad, sad story. I'll put this under the close-up camera. Um, as people uh, people know, uh, I, I um, uh, displayed last week the caribou light. Now, the caribou light is uh, it's a um, a hat, a top hat for a Raspberry Pi. I've got this on a Pi Four, um, and this is a six gig six gig uh, SDR transceiver it's not just a receiver it is actually a transmitter receiver um, it's based on a modem chip that's used for a, a range of uh, Wi-Fi and other applications so uh, but this is uh, this particular it's an open source project uh, it has been a long time in coming because of uh, component shortages and a few other bits and pieces uh, but it is the the thing that jumped out at me and the reason why I ordered one uh, was it is uh, actually capable of doing 30 to 6 gigs. So um, uh, this is 30 megahertz to 6,000 megahertz. Um, it is capable of transmitting and receiving, so it is actually a transceiver SDR. Uh, the way that it gets to 6 gigs is um, it is... It is a Wi-Fi modem that sits behind this, uh, and so uh, originally it was uh, to 2.4 gigs, and there is a multiplier uh, circuit in here. There's also an F FPGA. There's there's a whole lot of logic that sits behind this. This is actually the analog side of it. 
Um, and these two connectors, one connector, um, there is a, what they call the sub one gig connector, uh, which gets you 389.5 to 510 megahertz and 779 to 1020 megahertz. And then there is the 6 gig connector, which is 30 megahertz to 6 gigahertz, which is what I've got the, uh, uh, the this particular antenna on it. This 2 to, uh, uh, two to 10, 2 to 11 uh, gig um, log periodic. Um, so now the thing that I was trying to do tonight, uh, and this is the abject failure from yours truly, <laughs> was actually trying to get this up and going. Um, now, following uh, diligently following the instructions, etc., etc., um, I managed to get uh, everything compiled and installed. Uh, I managed to confirm that the board was okay. Uh, you could communicate with the board. Uh, I managed to get uh, compile and, and test the SOAPI SDR interface, which is how you, how you connect to it uh, with other applications like GQRX or Cubic or your SDR a, a front end program of choice and um, the issue that uh, I actually had was both of those pieces of software actually worked C come in Murray you're welcome to uh, you. <laughs> both of those pieces of software actually worked and I could prove that they were actually working but the problem I had was they were not talking uh, together and which is um, is uh, not good uh, I obviously have a particular issue with something I haven't I haven't quite um, followed the bouncing ball to the letter um, so I'm working on that one um, and hopefully uh, in a couple of weeks time because next week's presentation night in a couple of weeks time I can actually demonstrate the the caribou light um, up to six gigs um, and using a Raspberry Pi one of the things uh, Ben VK7 BN has actually got his working with a Pi Zero um, He's a bit concerned about the power of the Pi Zero um, and the fact that there's something on the board that gets quite hot. <laughs> um, and so uh, in in the little the wonderful little case that we showed last week, which um, Ken uh, VK7KRJ uh, 3D printed up, uh, it does get pretty hot in the case apparently. Uh, but the thing about it is Ben has actually got it up and working. Um, and he, he has put some hints on our Discord channel as to uh, what things you, you don't do uh, that they tell you to do uh, versus um, what things you need to do to actually uh, uh, get it working. I have to say um, the board is beautifully made. Um, I think probably the software side of it needs a little bit of work. Um, to make it uh, really easy to, and, and there, there are some specific little configuration things that you've got to do to boot files and all sorts of stuff in Raspberry Pi, in the Raspberry Pi, uh, which just makes it a little bit, you know, and you've got to do it in the right sequence and you've got to really know your way around in Raspberry Pi. Um, so that's the caribou light and I have to apologize. I was going to demonstrate it, can't do it tonight, sorry. <laughs> In two weeks' time, I will. Uh, that's my goal. That's my goal, and I've got two weeks to do it in. So, <laughs> so there you go. Um, now, um, and hello to uh, Phil uh, down in Kingston, VK7 ID. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome to the stream. Now, this arrived during the week. Uh, so this is the latest and greatest version. This is the January-February edition of uh, Amateur Radio Magazine, the Wireless Institute uh, of Australia's uh, flagship magazine with a picture on the front which looks very familiar <laughs> and um, a huge 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 congratulations to uh, Richard VK7ZBX because this is Richard's 1.8 meter 10 gigahertz dish uh, in his backyard pointed at the moon which is up here just next to the dotted eye <laughs> Um, and so this is uh, him operating uh, operating uh, 10 gig EME, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so, and if we, I'll just skip through to, there's a little description page in here um, uh, of, uh, of the, uh, what you're looking at on the front page, which I thought was excellent. Here we go. Uh, Moon bounce musings after momentous efforts. <laughs> 
So this is the um, <laughs> this is Moon Bounce Musings after momentous efforts, and all about uh, Richard putting together uh, his ten gig EME system. Uh, and I do, I actually do love the, uh, I do love the final comment, which is um, uh, Richard added that he'd spent four years on and off uh, on this project. It's been a very long road, he said, but credited the support of Rex Moncur VK7MO, who has been a great mentor for getting me this far and putting up with all my silly questions, <laughs> all our silly questions. So, uh, so there you go. Now, the other things, uh, the other things I'll just point out here. Um, in the magazine because there is a, a little bit of uh, VK7 in the magazine. There is, um, it's the 90th year of, um, of uh, Amateur Radio magazine uh, and there is a wonderful article by Peter Wolfenden, VK3RV, who is the WIA historian, uh, on how the WIA's Amateur Radio magazine came to be. Um, came into being uh, and 90 years of continuous publication um so uh so yeah uh, and connections with qst and connections with uh, the americans and all sorts of stuff and there is a wonderful wonderful archive which i mentioned just a moment ago in relation to the amateur radio digital archive uh there is a wonderful uh archive put together by will mcgee vk6 uu um uh, who has scanned uh and high quality scanned uh, magazines all the way back to 1933 up until I think 2013 or something like that um, and they are available uh, for free publicly uh, available and uh, they're putting together text files that you can uh, you can uh, search and all sorts of things so if you want to refer back to old articles and can I just can I just say um, <laughs> I wasn't going to show this but I'll, I'll um, this is this is the benefit of those archives. Uh, this is October 1968, so I was all of two years old. But this is a trade review by Bale Electronics, um, and if, if you've been around for for a while, you know Bale Electronics used to be the place in Victoria that you used to pick up uh, uh, equipment, amateur radio equipment from. This is the trade review by Bale Electronics of the FL50 SST SSB Yezu transmitter. Now, why why am I why have I printed this out? I actually uh, have an FL50 from my uh, compliments of my old man, uh, and I also have found an FR50, which is the 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 FL is the transmitter and the FR the F uh, the FL is the transmitter and the FR is the receiver. Um, here they are, um, and this was um, this was the uh, at the time the economy, I suppose you'd say, the economy uh, transceiver uh, from Yezu. Uh, puts out sixty watts, um, and uh, there is a wonderful, wonderful, um, and I, I have to get these two at some stages a retirement uh, project. Hi, hi. Uh, I have to get both of these up and going uh, into uh, a wonderful arrangement like this. <laughs> uh, and 60, uh, 60, 60 watts uh, AMCW uh, and SSB uh, on 3.5, 7, 14, 21 and 28 megahertz. Because of course when this was produced the WARC bands were not available to us. <laughs> So um, this is 19, uh, 1960s, mid-1960s uh, economy Yezu transmitter, and you had to buy a transmitter and a receiver to get a transceiver. So uh, that's the benefits of uh, the archive. Now, the other article that's in here, uh, and those of us who are um, uh, Radio Old Timers Club members um, will have seen this article because it appeared in um, the RAOTC magazine. But how Radio Australia reached the world, and um, there is some some wonderful, wonderful. Um, and I'll I'll just show you this picture because this is this is RF engineering at um, at <laughs> at its best. Um, this is this is the view of the antenna switch matrix that could switch up to thirty five antennas and ten transmitters, including a dummy load. 
and what we're talking about here is switch hundreds of kilowatts um, of RF uh, at the Radio Australia site in Shepparton, Victoria, which is where they used to um, uh, where they used to uh, uh, transmit from. Uh, and a wonderful article about um, Radio Australia. Uh, even the QSL card they put out VI3RA Radio Australia and there's a lots of amateurs who cut their teeth on RF engineering at the Radio Australia site. Uh, now there's the second part to um, Dale Hughes VK1DSH's multi-mode uh, transmitter for the 2200 meter band with class E finals so really uh, really efficient class E finals. Um, uh, and beautifully made uh, the, 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 the usual thing you'd expect from Dale um, and all of the, the details, schematics, uh, construction details, etc. Um, a simple r a controller for a bipolar stepper motor. Um, uh, now, Luigi Di Stefano, uh, VK3 AQZ, who's produced, um, there was a wonderful transceiver, a, a SDR transceiver that he produced. Uh, in a number of articles uh, last uh, over the last couple of years, has gone on to a homebrew uh, 400 watt T network antenna analyzer. And can I just say an all singing, all dancing antenna analyzer? Um, this not only enables you to um, manually change the two capacitors, so it's a T arrangement, so there's a capacitor off this side, capacitor off this side, and there is a tapped inductor in the middle. Uh, and, and these little LEDs down here tell you which tap you're on. So there you go. You've got a power SWR meter as well as uh, an analog power and SWR meter. And also you've got a control, um, a control arrangement here and the equivalent display in, um, uh, in an LCD display as well. So uh, pretty impressive uh, antenna tuning unit. Um, and the T arrangement actually would enable you to uh, match um, uh, pretty low to pretty high impedance uh, um, antennas that it's actually looking at. Uh, now, the next article. Here's another VK7. Um, so, um, and those, those that came along last time, um, last week, uh, I showed my soda pack. Uh, I bought it up actually for Jim, but there were a few people who were interested in what was in my soda pack. Um, so this is one of the things that is in my soda pack, which is the portable linked dipole. Uh, so this is a little three page article on uh, the construction of a, a linked dipole. Uh, originally we started off with Rubens, which is a foundation uh, 80, 40, 15 and 10 meter dipole. We then, um, we then uh, went ahead a little, bit, uh, a little bit more and went to a eight band linked dipole. Uh, which is the one that I'm using now. Uh, you can see it's pretty beaten around because it's got, been out on uh, many, many, many um, SOTA expeditions. Um, but uh, that's uh, that's the article about how you actually build it, how you actually calculate the uh, the links, the link lengths, um, and put it together and then test it uh, and tune it. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, also, I have to. I, I was just thumbs up to Warren VK uh, VK VK Seven Whiskey November. Uh, because Warren was the one who gave me the gave me the idea. We used to use alligator clips on each of the leaks. Now the problem with alligator clips is they rust really quickly, and of course you're out in the rain. Um, so Warren gave me the uh, idea of these what they call bullet connectors, which are um, uh, they're used used mostly in radio control power as power connectors in radio control but the big advantage they've got is they're gold plated and so they don't rust um, and this is this is well this is the 10 meter segment you can see uh, there's there's the tube uh, there's a bit of um, heat shrink on the end for a bit of a strain relief and then this is the bullet that pushes into the tube so that was a fantastic improvement and of course um, doesn't rust uh, hasn't rusted since and is still uh, still well and truly operating uh, now antenna modeling uh, using Fornec 2 this is part 5 uh, of, uh, of, of a multi-part uh, series 
So uh, that's uh, uh, that's the next article in AR magazine, um, and lots of uh, lots of radiation angle uh, diagrams. The DX Awards with Mark Hillman. So this is where uh, the DX standing uh, is currently sitting with DXCC. Um, Phil Fitz, Fitz Herbert uh, VK3FF uh, Collins S line conversion and uh, conservation job a two. <laughs> So the, the Collins S line, if you've ever seen them, are a beautiful, uh, uh, beautiful series of um, transmitter, receiver, um, uh, external VFOs, speakers, um, and monitor scopes, and all sorts of things. So uh, so yeah, um, v, um, VK five KK Dave Minchin um, Spectrum Horizons the VHF UHF column. Uh, talks about uh, they've put together a, a 10 meg FM reference and phase lock loop reference switch projects uh, and lots of details around that. So uh, if you want to uh, uh, GPS lock your uh, your transceiver, uh, there's a definite, definite um, uh, uh, option uh, because the ZLPLL, unfortunately, Wayne, uh, Wayne Pearson's um, now silent key, which is really unfortunate, um, so, uh, and talking about silent keys, there's a wonderful, uh, uh, a wonderful silent key uh, expose for Rodney Champness, um, who uh, VK3UG, uh, who's really well known in uh, VK3. So uh, there's a bit of a spread on uh, him. Now, Alara, the Alara column, which is written by Jenny Water, but there's a wonderful. Wonderful expose, and I, I actually um, thanked Linda for this because Linda put in all about a wrap up of the Tassie Ham Radio Convention and Expo 2022, and here's a wonderful picture uh, showing Andrea, uh, Catherine, Jane, Linda, uh, Margaret who is ZL3YF, that was one of our ZLs, and Maria, uh, VK5MAZ, who's Paul's uh, partner, PAZ, VK5PAZ, who won the Australia Day uh, uh, contest with a huge score. So um, a fantastic wrap-up of um, the Tassie Ham Radio uh, Convention and Expo and the fact that they had an Alara table uh, that was that was that uh, had all of these, these uh, Alara women all there uh, answering questions. So, fantastic. So that's uh, Amateur Radio Magazine. Uh, give you a bit of an expose. That's the July, the July, January, February uh, edition, uh, 2023. So, uh, fantastic magazine. Um, now, I, I told you it was the uh, the magazine uh, episode, didn't I? Uh, Jubis Magazine. We, now, we've taken a look at a few things in here, but there's, there's just a few other things that I want to point out in here. Uh, first thing is, um, it's Jubis's 50th year. Uh, for those who don't know, Jubis Magazine, if you're into microwave experimentation, Jubis is your magazine. Uh, it is a bilingual magazine, so everything is in uh, English and German. Um, oh, hello Lionel, KJ7OHOFH, Oscar Fox Hotel. And hello from, uh, from over in uh, the US. So there you go. Now, um, one of the things that I would um, I wanted to point out here is there is a wonderful article about the echo mode in WSJTX 2.6.0, and the it is written by Bob Atkins, who is KA1KKGT. Charlie Suckling, uh, DL3WDG. Now Charlie's now in Germany. He was uh, uh, um, doing experimentation with Rex, uh, and of course Joe Taylor, K1JT, who uh, is the original uh, writer of um, WSJT uh, and WSJTX. So I'll just get the right page here. Um, now the echo mode, this is echo mode from the point of view of bouncing a signal off the moon. Um, so uh, you can see the echo mode. Now that, that page is just writing, so that's that's not... Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. And in fact I might zoom in here just a little bit so you've got a bit of a... 
So, the main screen and the wide graph display for a sequence of 10 lunar echoes at 1296 MHz obtained by KA1GT. So it goes through the basic operation, uh, transmit a fixed frequency 1500 Hz tone. Um, oh, what just happened then? Okay. Um, uh, fixed frequency 1500 Hz tone for 2.3 seconds. Offset the receiver frequency from the computer EME Doppler shift. Uh, wait approximately 0.2 seconds for a start time of a received echo and then record the received signal for 2.3 seconds. So the 2.3 seconds is the uh, the amount of time it takes for that signal to go up to the moon, bounce off and then come back again. So it's that double uh, double 1.15. Um, uh, 1. Um, so uh, interesting uh, and this what this program actually does is enable you to uh, check that you are um, uh, number one you can see your echoes you can receive your echoes uh, and that they are uh, uh, they are actually bouncing off the moon uh, versus uh, with that uh, taking into account the delay of the signal going up and then coming back again so uh, really neat little um, uh, application uh, that's available in WSJTX 2.6.0 and in fact it was it was available before that uh, and hello, uh, Andrew from uh, Signet. Uh, I hope you're uh, you're doing okay. Um, I'll just show this because it's interesting. This is actually very interesting. I can get it to lie flat. Um, okay, what are we looking at here? Let's zoom in here a little bit. So we're looking at three spectrographs. Uh, One forty-four, so two megs. 23 centimeters, 2 meters, sorry, 2 meters, 23 centimeters and 3 centimeters. So, uh, 144 megs, 1296 megs, uh, 10,368 megs, so 10 gigs, um, observed respectively by the three, um, uh, well, two of the two of the authors and somebody else, uh, showing the um, the plot for the same 10 echoes as in figure one and the reported signal to noise for these measurements of minus 24.5 minus 9.9 .9, and minus 9.6 db so uh, uh, so you can use it across a range of uh, range of frequencies if you're uh, if you're set up to be able to do um, echo uh, echoes off the moon which um, Rex and Richard have been communi communicating via the moon, um, but uh, some of that has been uh, actually putting echoes, uh, echoes, and seeing whether you can actually receive your own signal back again, uh, given degradation um, and uh, spreading, and a few other uh, elements uh, that you need to take into account, um, and the power, uh, and the gain of your dish, and a whole lot of other uh, factors that you need to take into account when you actually do. Uh, uh, Earth Moon Earth communications. So um, that was that was all I was going to point out in here. Uh, it is full of um, uh, you can see the No Tune 432 transverter uh, for an SDR. Uh, so that gets you onto 70 centimeters from a, uh, a normally a HF uh, SDR. It's a wonderful little board that's been designed by DK4XP. Uh, but if you're into um, if you're into microwave experimentation, uh, have a look at Jubis magazine. Uh, and in fact, I can show you if I get this correct. I can show you. Uh, oh, that was a bad transition, wasn't it? Um, there's Jubis. So Jubis magazine. If you put in Jubis.org, um, www.jubis.org, um, it has uh, general information, the latest news, the current issue, and some uh, a short form of the current issue. Uh, they put out Technics uh, magazines, uh, which is a selection of uh, the best technical articles during that particular year. They put into a uh, a bigger booklet. Um, which is a, a series of those technical articles all put into one uh, one copy. Uh, there is a sample copy that's available there, 16 meg download, so it's a high quality copy. 
uh, for you to have a look at so you can see the uh, the quality of uh, and there is no expense spared on the Jubis magazines it is really well produced uh, the schematics are really well produced the photos are always really well produced any spectrograms etc etc are always really really well uh, well put together so uh, so there you go now the next magazine the VK QRP Club uh, magazine uh, which is called Low Key. This is their website, um, and uh, it's a wonderful little uh, 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 circle series of uh, series of uh, pictures. I'll just scroll, see if I can scroll down a little bit there. Uh, of uh, that's a little uh, SDR. <laughs> Danger, beware of, a, of the ham radio operator. Uh, there's an old and new. Always something new, um, etc. Now. Their magazine, uh, their magazine is Low Key Magazine, um, and this is the uh, the last edition that uh, I got uh, just before Christmas. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the Christmas edition. Um, it cost you all of fifteen dollars uh, to be a member of the uh, VK QRP Club, and you get uh, you get these magazines quarterly. Um, they are uh, really well put together. Um, uh, if you're into experimentation in QRP, uh, there's usually some great articles in here. Uh, how to contribute. Uh, the President's Notes from uh, uh, Trevor Quick, who's over here on this page. Um, uh, he talks about uh, the Telegraph at Hectorville uh, in South Australia, rebuilding high mound keys, so the Japanese keys. Uh, more Sereno power using 5 volt distribution USB hub, uh, glue resistivity, <laughs> uh, and clipsal key knobs. So there you go. Um, uh, Don Callow with Club News, uh, and this is uh, who's, uh, who's the 10, 20, and 30 year uh, uh, members of the VKQRP Club. Uh, there is uh, Bits and Kits, which is available on their website. They, you can buy uh, cheap components from them. Uh, the Treasurer's uh, Annual Report from uh, Kevin Zeitz. Um, so this is their annual, uh, the annual edition. Now, the Max Brueger um, uh, Award for Best Technical Article, uh, the rules, and then who won that particular article, uh, and um, uh, who's taken over. Uh, and it's, it's uh, uh, Doc Westcombe Down, uh, VK5BUG, uh, Peter Parker VK3YE and uh, Bob McHugh VK2AVQ, um, who uh, was on the uh, on the shortlist. Um, so uh, uh, and they uh, they all uh, Doc was the one who uh, who took it out for his uh, his uh, articles uh, his first of a series of articles of uh, of uh, homebrew antenna construction. Um, which includes uh, 160 meters, uh, uh, 470 uh, kilohertz, uh, and uh, and uh, a few others, uh, helical uh, vertical antennas, um, stealth helical vertical antennas. I have to say, so uh, so um, uh, that's uh, that's the Max Brueger uh, award for technical articles. Uh, Andrew, uh, VK1DA, uh, 2DA, um, the QRP Hours Contests, uh, October 2022 uh, results. Um, and there's a few, uh, there's a few VK7s in here. Uh, I think you'll find um, VK7 Whiskey Whiskey, Double Whiskey, who's um, probably doing the technical night tonight. Uh, up there, VK7DW uh, with the digital is, is in there. Uh, and CW, uh, there is VK7 Whiskey Whiskey as well with eight, uh, eight contacts and VK7 KPC down here um, uh, with one contact on CW. So, uh, so there you go. See, you just make one contact on CW and you're in the contest. Um, the soapbox, um, receiving separate receiving antennas for 30 metres and below uh, and loop antenna here, uh, DFing antenna. Um, and loop uh, loop antennas, uh, rotary changeover switch for a coaxial fed uh, fed aerials. That's an Eddystone uh, Eddystone key too. Uh, very nice stock. Um, 
the now Chris Thompson VK1 CT always has a uh, a crossword uh, amateur radio crossword so that's always uh, always interesting and uh, frequencies club nets uh, application for membership and uh, VK5 WAT now that's the club call sign for the VK QRP club uh, and here's uh, here's Peter uh, putting it into operation uh, uh, with his little backpack and it even shows his uh, handwritten log I love it and there's a there's a, a YouTube link down the bottom uh, for um, um, for <laughs> for um, uh, watching his actual uh, his actual activation so uh, so there you go so um, if you're into experimentation if you're into low power um, low key fifteen dollars and you get four of these a year um, and access to a whole lot of other things in the uh, VKQRP club uh, and if you've got an article, they're uh, very interested, very interested indeed. Now, I'll just have, because I can feel my vocal cords starting to go on me. And have it, hello to uh, hello to Ben, uh, VK, uh, VK7BN, uh, late to the party but here. I, uh, ben, I, I did earlier, you might have to catch up with it on the recording of the stream. I, I, I apologise that uh, I, I hadn't got this going yet. Uh, so in a fortnight's time, it'll be going. <laughs> so it is um, it is a bit of a challenge to uh, to get it to uh, get it to go. So uh, I think they've got a bit of a uh, bit of work to do there. Anyway, uh, finish off with reminders. Um, next week, uh, our presentation night uh, is with Ollie VK Seven NFI. Love that call sign. Um, and he is doing a presentation on the Kraken uh, direction finding SDR. Uh, this is uh, if if you haven't put it in uh, to Google, uh, put in Kraken XDR. Um, probably don't just put in Kraken because it comes up with all sorts of things like spiced rum and um, uh, mythical ocean creatures and all sorts of stuff. Um, but Kraken SDR uh, next week, which is the first of March, would you believe? Uh, next Wednesday is the first of March, seven thirty p.m. up here. We will be streaming the uh, the night. Uh, and it's a presentation slash demonstration uh, of Kraken, so should be a fantastic uh, should fantastic night. Now, a couple of the other presentations that we're working on, um, we have uh, Tony VK7 XTC and also Mike VK7 DMH, both who are experimenting with weather um, satellites and receiving images from weather satellites. And I, I know Tony's been posting some fantastic images fantastic high resolution images um, of a, a, a range of what weather satellites put out um, and was able to like when there was a big cyclone over uh, over New Zealand North Island uh, he was able to show in a in a composite uh, of all of Australia in three in three pictures and across into the the Tasman and, and New Zealand um, he was able to show the weather pattern um, the cloud pattern there and very clearly show that there was a uh, intense low off the North Island of New Zealand. So uh, that was, um, so I'm trying to get uh, those two to give us a bit of a presentation. So watch this space. Uh, and the other one is, of course, uh, the magnetic loop um, uh, that I've been banging on about as well as the tuna. Um, the magnetic loop currently, for those who are interested, uh, is, is on 20 meters um, at low power. It's only five watts. Uh, and it's doing whisper on um, uh, right at the moment, and getting some pretty uh, pretty impressive uh, results around the world. Uh, so with five watts uh, and a directional magnetic loop antenna, um, you it's a pretty impressive beast. And and what I would like to be able to do is demonstrate to you uh, the really narrow bandwidth of a magnetic loop, uh, which I can do with a waterfall. Um, and why why that's the case, um, and what advantages that gives you as a magnetic loop antenna, uh, as well as uh, demonstrate the magnetic loop tuner, uh, which comes from um, uh, Dave Trewen in um, the UK. So uh, so that's that's uh, our presentation nights for probably the next two or three months, um, as well as anything else that comes along. Uh, so. <laughs> And we've got a couple of um, couple of statewide events in there, and a few other things, and that probably gets us up to our centenary, which uh, the centenary of organised amateur radio uh, in Tasmania, 
uh, occurs at June in June 2023. So uh, watch this space. There'll be a whole lot of activities in June uh, that we'll be doing uh, special event stations, and you'll be able to operate the special call sign. Um, you'll be able to get call signs. There'll be a special contest. There'll be all sorts of things going on. So uh, and lots and lots of history that uh, that uh, sits behind the VK7 amateur radio scene. All right, that's our show for tonight. Um, thanks to all those people who uh, who came in, uh, and any uh, any watchers out there, uh, any stalkers, any whatever, um, and uh, anybody who's watching on RF. Uh, thank you. Um, I will be listening on R2. Uh, I apologised last week. I realised that I'd let the batteries go flat in the handheld. Uh, which of course if you were calling in I apologise you probably weren't getting anywhere because uh, I wasn't actually receiving you because the battery's flat anyway, a bat flattery um, so, 73, have a great week uh, and we'll see you at the Kraken SDR uh, presentation next week, this is VK7 OTC the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV experimenters night 73, have a great week, stay safe <laughs>